So it is only our second episode of The Drafting Table. It's a program where we explore character creation through the lens of Mutants and Masterminds 3rd Edition. I'm really pleased to introduce and welcome Agua Viva. Agua. Hey, guys. I can call you Agua, yeah? Yeah, you can totally call me Agua. Hi. Nice. A pleasure <laughs> to meet you. We've had a very interesting conversation um, about all manner of things, not the least of which is this character you've created, Faraday. Where are you playing and uh, um, engaging with Mutants and Masterminds? Okay, so yeah, that that actually kind of be the most important bit because it's like the idea behind the character is kind of based on the fact that I'm playing on this Discord server <laughs> called like Freedom City, the Freedom Verse. That's right. We're we're very familiar. Apuk is a, a dear friend and and a, and a Ronan and a pal and yeah. uh yeah. Hey, Apuk. What's up, Apuk? You know, you know uh Apuk will be watching. So okay. Cool. Faraday. Grace Hawthorne. Yeah. Part of the Freedom Verse. Let's let's get into it. She's a British gadgeteer. She uh learned how to make her weapons young and built a uh, a whole arsenal of technology to aid her in her adventures. Okay. Uh, the most iconic of which would be her micro drones. Yeah, BMI micro drones. BMI uh, means brain machine interface. I want, okay, I always wanted her to like telepathically control swords uh, instead of doing move objects. Use extra limbs and elongation and make extra limbs subtle and sustained, you know. This was my first character, so I was really... Sure. This move object uses dexterity and um, fighting uses fighting, you know. I, I didn't want to spend, like, double the points for just one thing that I wanted to right. do. I wanted to just either use just dexterity or just use fighting. And the solution that someone gave to me was to, to make this kind of like max out extra limbs so I can use as many swords as I can. Make, make that extra limbs pro, uh, both projection, which means like it, it's not my actual body. It's just a projection, you know. You know, you don't have to like activate it. They're sustained and make them subtle or sustained. I always have them and they're projection. So I don't get hurt if I ever get. I wanted to simulate uh, controlling swords telepathically without using move object. So the next part would be elongation. So I could have that sword fighting, but further away from myself. I see. Okay. And to have that extra multi attack because the multi attack is, I mean, why why have multiple swords if you can't you know, multi attack? Yeah. If you can't multi attack, so I had right. to have enhanced strength to add that multi attack to it. What is an array? An array is basically when you have multiple powers, okay? But you, you don't need to... But since you don't use every power at the same time, you can kind of, like, trade them out for... Ah, um, I powers. see. So you take okay. the, the power that costs the most. Yeah. Uh, in this case, like, the rapiers. Six ranks of strength-based damage, um, plus multi attack, plus improved quick. In total, 13 points. I'm tracking. And then you put one more point for each power that, that this could be traded with. Okay. Okay. So you can, so for example, I have saboteur, which is uh, on the foot, which is uh, it's a stun. You know, you, mm -hmm. you get some get some electricity because I am Faraday. Get some electricity and stun someone for a little bit, stop them from moving for a little second there. And it's uh, it's it's uh, I think it's just a basic stun really. It's Affliction 10, it's Dazed and Stun, it's Fort-based, as it usually is. Um, yeah. Okay, so the original idea behind Saboteur was that it was going to be a nullify. Because I, I, I play Overwatch, you know? I play a lot of yeah. shooters. And I really like Sombra, and Sombra has a power where she hacks people and nullifies their abilities for a second. And uh, nothing that I could do would ever make nullify worth using because it would it was so very specific you know <laughs> it was always like either you spend like double the points or you would 
you would not you would not be able to find a situation in which nullify could be used you know that i could not just spend a hero point for then i just gave up doing nullify eventually I thought i should re i still really want to do this so instead right. of making a nullify descriptor instead of making a nullify like nullify technology and nullify something or the other thing i thought let's do affliction okay because affliction is just gonna like stun this person he can't act he can't use his powers because he's stunned you know and I can do the variables descriptive thing in which I don't really need to say, oh, it's because he, it's it's because of I, I know if I technology. No, no, not necessarily. It could be any character. It doesn't matter. It's just variable descriptor. Like it. I, I, gotcha. I could say it's I could say it's heat or cold or electric because that has because those three things have to do with conductivity of metal, which also has uh, to do with, you know, Faraday being Faraday. <laughs> Gotcha. I like it. Uh, yeah. Like yeah in, in character, I, in character, I would, I would role play. Like I understand what this person is. Is I understand what this mm -hmm. person is all about. You know, if it's a normal person, then I can just use electricity. But if it's like something that's specifically weak to like heat or cold, I could probably do that. And if I could think of another re re reason, like I don't, another reason, like another possible weakness that had that had to do with metal, you know. Then right. I could just say something like that. Yeah, gotcha. Okay. All right. All right. I'm buying it. I'm buying it. Now talk to me about the sword storm. Sword storm. Sword storm is really easy. Uh sword, sword storm is basically a damage uh damage six uh burst area. Uh you see that it has a slashing descriptor, you know? Yeah. And I, I think you can just already imagine what that means and yeah. why you wouldn't want to be in one. No, no, absolutely. None of none of this is anything that I want to hang out in. <laughs> yeah, like like um, uh, I like a drizzle. Uh, not sure about a sword storm. Yeah, <laughs> no, exactly. No. Yeah. It's like uh, it's like a tornado or something, you know. A sword tornado. Yeah, no, tornado. that's uh, yeah, swordnado. Swordnado yeah. was one of the was one of the was concept names, but it was very very stupid. So I stopped. <laughs> so, I, so I stopped myself from using the word swordnado. Swordnado. <laughs> swordnado. Swordnado sounds like sharknado. It does. It does. Yeah. Yeah. It does. <laughs> All right. So what's this next skill I'm looking at? Uh, this ability? one is flying flesh. But to understand flying flesh, you would need to scroll down just a little bit. Sure. To see the harmless arsenal just a little bit because it, the it has harmless to, it arsenal. With hover boots. Hover boots is it's very straightforward. It's it's uh basics it, it's a basic flight, but since it's kind of weakish, because I didn't really I didn't, I didn't want to show I didn't want Faraday to be the kind of hero, the kind of flying hero that goes like you know to the atmosphere. I'm out of here. Yeah, you know, yeah. she's not a you know, you know, she's not Superman. She's just, she just hovers with hover boots. I like you that. Know? Well, you know, in the hover boots, and like you need to be closer to the ground for it to actually have pressure to be able to lift off. So yeah, seven meters off the ground. That's reasonable. Yeah, that's very reasonable. That's like yeah. two stories. Okay, yeah. that's at most. If, like, like if you want to get into a a burning building or something, seven meters is pretty practical. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Yeah, uh, how fast? Uh, I mean, when I think hover, I think kind of slow, but is yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so flight two is um, how many meters flight two is? Oh, wait, you can just scroll up. Uh, yeah, I, I don't remember how fast it is. It's not that fast. It's not that fast. It's like, no, yeah, yeah. It's like sprint walking or something. <laughs> I like that fast walking and dig it. Um, <laughs> yeah, this just on, on, on air. Okay, so so yeah, so that's very so it's relatively slowish, which is where flying flesh comes in. Flying fleshy. I don't speak French. Uh, yeah, neither do I. So I'm not familiar. But talk to me about this. Yeah, flesh of uh flesh. <laughs> it's like it's uh, like impeccable. Yes. Flesh is like some kind of uh, it's a maneuver in fencing where you um, kind of just like lunge at the enemy, like okay. jumping at them, you know? Sure. So sure. Right. All right. I got the idea you. Okay. was if you wanted to go, if I wanted to go even faster, you know, I have this. It stacks with the hover boots. I instead of flight two, it's flight four, you know? 
this maneuver and it, you said it was a move in fencing yes interesting okay so that is yeah so okay uh, an aggressive offensive fencing technique used with the foil and the ep i'm not saying that right surely um, say a saber it was a, a saber or rape rapier gotcha yeah yeah and uh, there's, there's three kinds of swords the saber the rapier and the epee gotcha yeah and this um let me share this real quick it it definitely demonstrates the attack hold on the maneuver yes yeah so it looks very effective this is actually a probably a better imagining faraday with this move and uh and i uh, don't want it to be me yes there we go yeah all right great that's great that's uh, very evocative i get it uh i see it i do not want to feel it um but uh okay and yeah. now the and boots since it help fades, with that. It, and since it fades it does it prevents me from like you know maintaining that altitude if i wanted okay. to you know, I gotcha. I gotcha. Okay. Okay. So th there, there are limits on, you know, uh, on the powers and the, the way that you built this so oh. that you weren't always just kicking butt all the time. Yeah. Forever. Honestly, okay. it, it's one of those things, you know, you don't want your character, like, at least in my opinion, you don't want your character to be like limitless because it kind of yeah. gets boring after a while when yeah. you realize like it, it's always more interesting for you to have those flaws. Like, like there's something you can't do, you know, That's because right. then you have yeah. to actually think about how to use the, the tools at your disposal and to work actually, around it. Like, yeah. Move around it. That's why like, it's literally a toolkit. Like yeah. if, if you, the, 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 the powers I have is literally like just a toolkit. You, you, I have them, but I have to think about how I use them. You know, it's fascinating. Yeah, absolutely. Like it is sort of a, you know, a very uh, amplified, uh, jacked up kind of uh, Swiss army knife. Yeah. Kind of, yeah, like kind of like that. Yeah. Yeah, I dig it. It's okay, interesting. We'll go for it. Continue. No, no, please. No, no, you, you, I interrupted you. I'm sorry. No, 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 no. You are my guest, my friend. Please go on. <laughs> okay. <laughs> it, it's, it, it's interesting because... Uh, it, we're gonna move we're gonna move on to that like this is the the harmless arsenal is in the is another array you know yeah so the thing as, as we mentioned before the thing about arrays is that you can only use one power at a time unless it's dynamic but i'm not getting into that okay <laughs> but in this in this case you can only use one power at a time i can't fly and that i can't fly and teleport you know I right, can fly, wake right. around, and then teleport with the blink bracelet, which is, yeah, a little complicated. Change well, before velocity. we jump into that real quick, I want to I want to back up just a minute. Fashion tech okay. protection. Yo, yes, we forgot to, I forgot about that. Yeah, so fashion yeah. tech. Fashion I mean, tech is uh, less less we forget. Um, Faraday, very fashionable. Yes, very fashionable. In fact, yeah. she's ba part of her is based on a fashion model that I am actually very interested in. Oh, Who's really? Whose brand is Fashion Tech? So, Fashion Tech yeah. is 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 an is a is something from the world that you plan. Yes, no, I from the like world it. I exist in. That's what I mean. Yeah, yes, Where she exists it's... in real life. Anouk Wipresh. Oh, in real life. Yes, in real life. Anouk Wipresh. She's uh, this is Dutch. She's a Dutch uh, fashionista and engineer. This is what I love about talking to people about their characters is that you have built a very intensive, methodical, thoughtful, whole idea here in the form of, of Faraday. I, I love that. Now, are there, will we find other nods to the world, uh, uh, you know, uh, to, to, to things that inspire you uh, throughout the rest of the character sheet? Uh, yes, actually, yeah. 
Yeah, I want be sure to call that out. I mean, the, you know, the things that you want to share, um, uh, because you know, I think the other thing about this is that these are also, um, I think people understand if they get into it, but these are also deeply personal constructs, and uh, and so share only the things that you're comfortable sharing for sure. But um, oh, yeah. but I love that. Okay, so what I love about this too, is, did you name this the harmless arsenal? Yes, I did. Yes, I did. <laughs> Clever. I, why? Why? Why would you do such a thing? Why would you? Because it such rhymes. A lie? It's, it's kind of. <laughs> it's kind of cool to say out out loud. It is. It is. It's. Uh, it's a good. It's a. It, it's got a good mouthfeel, and uh, and there's something. It's very humorous. I very. I like it a lot. So is uh, is Faraday as a character? Uh, is she? Is she sort of that wry? Does she have a wry sense of humor? Is she? Yeah, she kind of does. She has a, okay. a wry, dry kind of sense of humor. She likes puns a lot. Okay, all right. I like that. I like that. Uh, especially, it seems to me that that uh, Faraday has uh, a, a higher intellect and utilizes sort of the... I mean, I could see puns being sort of the... Uh, a play on intelligence, right? You know what I mean? Like, you know, people are like, oh, puns are so dumb, but they're really... Yeah, honestly, like... So a lot of people say like puns are dumb and honestly sometimes they are but if you get like like if you get like a really clever one in if you have good comedic timing and you're very sure. clever with them you know you can, yeah. you can get a pun that can get a laugh out of anyone you know with, with like four or five different layers of of uh of you know context and yeah yeah absolutely so okay so i'm starting to get a feel for the character i really am starting to get a feel for the personality um, and it comes through with, you know, uh, I'm glad we kind of unpacked the, the harmless arsenal. Now we talked about the blink braces a little bit, hover boots. We talked about what's this whip wrecked cage. So, as I said, the name of the, 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 the fashion person was a Ah, okay. And so is this a fashion cage? It is. The cage, it is not a fashion cage. It's all, it's actually more like a Faraday cage. Okay. All right. Which is also the, the cage part is that, that reference to her own name. I like it. The, I like it. The idea is, is because Anukuri Presh actually invented a suit that can make you immune to electricity. Okay. What do you know what the design, uh, um, purpose of for that i mean that is just sort of exploring um fashion and you know was there a, a a need to protect people from electricity or no i'm pretty sure she just did it because it was cool because she's you know <laughs> that's what it sounds like honestly <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> that is what it she sounds just like she could because she's cool okay that's okay. all that's all i Are know you, about it you have got to be kidding me uh mm -hmm. wait a minute all right. Okay. I just have to show this. <laughs> yes. I'm, la I'm laughing because no wonder, uh, no wonder this, this person uh, was inspiring. I, I just did a, a, just a quick, uh, you know, Google image search and <laughs> this is what came up. Yes. <laughs> yes. Yes. <laughs> You Look know, at this Albertine looking woman. I, you know what? I'm, I'm, I'm getting it. I, I really, I, I get it more than I did prior. This is uh, quite dramatic. Okay, so, so that's what's happening here. Um, this, this uh, cage is is part of the outfit and uh, it, it immunity. It protects you from electrical damage. <laughs> I see. The idea is that since, since you see, it's uh, it has a quick change feature the idea yeah. is it, uh, it briefly changes uh faraday's outfit for a second or I more see. you know and yeah. uh turns it into the the the, the or at least something reminiscent to what you saw earlier <laughs> like in in my head at least because it's not set, i i haven't described her appearance anywhere in in the in the page actually i don't think so at least I have a feeling oh. that there's the intensity on that face. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm getting it. I I'd absolutely can see where you would, where you would get inspiration from that. 
I know, right? It is so awesome. It is really badass. I mean, it's, it's just unexpected, my friend. Absolutely unexpected. And also what I love about this is that she is just like, look upon me, mere mortals. <laughs> uh, this is the one I like the most. She's just like, do you see? <laughs> do you see me? <laughs> and, and the Tesla ball gauntlets. <laughs> Ah, oh, this is great. Uh, Agua, that is and, just... and the best part is the and the best part, it almost loops back because you can see that her mask is kind of inspired on a fencing mask. It it is. Okay, yeah. I mean it it definitely I, I can tell that she's probably working on like that whole pieces to keep the million volts of electricity that she's <laughs> dealing with. Um, it's but uh, over her, her dress, <laughs> <laughs> none of it touches her skin. And yeah, she's like, uh, yeah, she's like, mess with me, won't you? I like it. I like it. Yeah. Kind of an F around and find out moment. Um, okay, great. Exactly. So that's inspired, my friend, inspired. Uh, and mm -hmm. then the Wells Belt. Wells Belt is invisibility. You can probably guess where Wells comes from. Uh, Orson Welles. No, no, H.G. Wells. Ah, see, darn it. The guy, Different the time. guy who, <laughs> the guy who created the Invisible Man. Ah, uh, okay. See, now I I didn't know that off the top of my head. That's clever. Okay, so you're paying some homage. It's brilliant. It's bright. I should probably now already mention this because uh, uh, part of a big chunk of the inspiration of Faraday is a character from an extremely obscure video game, which I will not mention because because um, you get because if you know the game, then you know the game. If you don't, you're never gonna find out. It's kind of like it's kind of one of those. All right. Kind of uh, fair enough. Those. Fair enough. And and I and I I say preserve your you know uh the mystique and the the depth of the of the character creation here. Um, absolutely fine with that. So um, yeah. and, and I'm presuming this this is this art have something to do with that. Perhaps. Perhaps, or maybe not. Who knows? Who can say? If you don't know, you don't know, and you never will. Okay. So <laughs> <laughs> let's talk about advantages. Okay, yeah. So advantages. Uh, I have a S load of advantages. You have an S load. You do. An -load. Yes. An, yes. Uh, S stands for so many. So many load. Yes. Correct. I <laughs> uh, like it. Okay. All right. So um, advantages. You know, how can you have so many? Uh, is it just uh, you can just have as many as you want? Yeah, you basically have as many you want because they all cost the same. They're just one point each. Okay. They're not they're, they're not very expensive um, unless you, you start hoarding them like I did. I was going to say, yeah. Now, do you pick them up as you're walking around? Just, uh, oh, I have my advantage. I, I got that one here. Or, or you, you come to the game uh, with your advantages picked. You come with, to the game with your advantages picked as, long, as far as I know, unless I'm playing wrong. <laughs> no, I mean, yeah, honestly, I don't know that there's any playing uh, Mutants and Masterminds wrong um, <laughs> because it's all right. Um, uh, these are things that you have taught, your, your, that your characters learned, uh, benefits that they were born with. Um, Most, mostly these are, these seem to be like stuff they, yeah, yeah, I'd say either taught or born with, you know, usually yeah. as one or the other. Uh, but most of this is taught. Yeah, it looks like a lot of training. Now, Aegis, what's Aegis? Aegis? Where is Aegis? Aegis, uh, Benefit Security Clearance Aegis. <clears throat> uh, here, do you see my mouse? Ah, I see. Oh, maybe we can't talk about it? Is that what you're saying? No. <laughs> you're I like, why is that on here? Was... I'll have okay, to kill you now. So, um, yeah, I think this uh, may have been something I forgot to delete. But you know what? It's an interesting thing. So, um, as we're going to talk later in the, in the video about the lore, um, I'm going to like, uh, <clears throat> I'm going to like mention stuff, uh, like how I build the lore of this character is like very interconnected with each game. And in one of these games, I was given the ability, I, I was, uh, uh, because, uh, you know, uh, Dungeon ma like game masters, you know, they don't uh, 
think everything through, but I, but <laughs> Faraday does. And right. they let me into an Aegis security base where I was able to um, put this little fun little pen drive into one of their computers and put a little I virus see. of Libertatum. Okay. Now, wait a minute. The the virus was what now? Libertatum. Liber, libertato? Lib like a, Lib the potato of liberty? No, Libertatum. Like... Libertatum, uh, the Latin word for liber liberty, I assume. Okay, gotcha. I thought you said libertato, and I was like, it's like you're turning all of the the uh, machines into potatoes is kind of, but for liberty is what I <laughs> is where I went with that. But oh, I, Jesus, yeah, <laughs> uh, it is yeah. a uh, it's a gift. Um, yeah, libertatum. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, the, the thing is, I was supposed to delete this because I, I, I had since lost access to the virus, mm. which is why it's not in the powers section. I see. I see. And I forgot. I think I forgot to just part to cut that part out. Clearly, your character will grow and change and evolve as we're talking about right now. How do mm -hmm. you keep track of the things that you've experienced? Do you like have a journal do you, or is it just sort of you, you kind of roll through it? All of the above. I do have like notes that I write down, you know. Okay. Yeah. I, I do write them things down uh, partially because uh, most of my games that I like to play, particularly because it's, it's the only I, I don't have a lot of I, I can't really play live games that much anymore, you know. So okay. I mostly play people that I post, you know. And in play by post, everything's already saved, like in text. So I, all I have to do is just like I look like it up on it. the server. It's always going to be there. And that's one of know? the benefits of of being a part of the whole Freedom Verse is that that living record exists, and people can go back and look at and read this historical kind of record of the adventures you're having. Yeah, yeah. And it's it. ve it's very interesting. It's very like there's not a lot of places where you can do something like that you know really there really isn't i mean it, it is cool to know that you are able to reflect back on what happened in the past and it's a record of what of the fun you're having i think it's great oh that yeah that, that's honestly the one of the best parts because you know there are some games you, you never want to forget and you know yeah yeah how long does it take for these things to unfold given that it is that kind of a thing Play by post uh, kind of works differently than uh, sitting around a table or even sitting around uh, a group call, because the idea is you're playing by post, you're playing by chat. You can add to the story whenever you want on your own time, on your own schedule. You know? Yeah, yeah. And would would that helps a lot? Like the benefits of that, you know, is that you don't really have to allocate four hours of your time, four or five hours of your time. You know? Yeah. On one day to play a game of Mutants Masterminds, you can do it at your own pace. You know, you don't I have love to that. like say, oh, I wanted to play. Scheduling issues just don't exist anymore, you know, because you, you can't go and say, oh, I wanted to play, play, play. I wanted to play today, guys, but I have a party or I have a, a uh, job I have school, or, or a job or in a different or a time special. zone or yeah, yeah. Oh, different time zones, especially because once again, we're from all over the place, okay? Yeah, truly. Yeah. Global, right? Different continents, different coasts, mm -hmm. different everything. Okay. I like Hemispheres. it. Uh, Agua, I have a question for you. Um, what got you into mutants and masterminds? What was the thing that, because this is very involved. It mm -hmm. is very, the, the depth at which you have been able to uh, create this character, but then also find opportunity to engage in play, but to do so in a way that suits your schedule and your life and all that stuff, but still come out of this process with some depth and 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 truly significant fun gameplay experiences that you want to remember forever. Um, mm -hmm. How did you get here? So the first time I've heard about, oh, I've heard about Mutants and Masterminds without actually hearing the name of Mutants and Masterminds is kind of, there's this viral story on the, on the internet uh, about, like, there's a bunch of YouTube videos that just say the say the story out loud, you know. I tell it uh, that there's this guy who plays as a villain on Mutants and Masterminds, 
Uh, he has a sidekick ish. He's also a player. He plays this Russian gangster. And the three other players are these superheroes. One of them is kind of like Superman. One of them is kind of like Martian uh, Manhunter. And one of them is kind of like a hacker. Okay. Okay. The problem is, is that in their role play, the the three heroes are actually very abusive with their powers, you know. Mm-hmm. And throughout the and throughout the the process of the story, eventually that one powerless Russian gangster invested so many points in stealth that he was unfindable, and he used that power to basically to single handedly defeat all three of those superheroes forever, as revenge for. Um, turning his mad scientist friend who is the narrator in this story but he was beaten up so brutally that now he's just a brain in a jar by the superheroes the superheroes like murdered him basically so that 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 was a story that went on the internet and i had no idea what rpg that was from but that sounded awesome dr cortex i don't know Okay, we'll, f- we'll figure it out. A couple years after I heard that story, my, my cousin came in. He said, uh, hey, look at this uh, a PDF. You like RPGs, right? I do like RPGs. I made my own. Oh, cool. So so read this uh, this cool RPG I found. And it was uh, Mutants and Masterminds. And I was like, whoa, I had no idea this was a thing. This looks <laughs> awesome. And I read like the whole thing, you know? Yeah. And I was yeah. very interested in it, but I had no one to play it with. Um, so a couple years after that, I still had the thing downloaded on my phone. I, I never played with my cousin. Um, interesting. So your cousin shows you this thing. Yeah. I'm just hanging on to it, but we never actually, we never actually get to the point where we actually play the game, you know? And then after another couple years, uh, couple COVID-19 years happens. Between the time that you heard that wild story about the heroes and and create and we're talking today what's that span of time man okay so probably oh god it hasn't been this long i mean thank god it's been this long for uh, different reasons but um i must have seen it like six years ago so now how did you get to the server i got to the server because i COVID 19 happened and i eventually thought you know what i i want to play immunity masterminds i got this pdf file i got this hero idea that i want to do you know probably didn't even think of faraday when i thought of the hero uh, but i i wanted to do like a super, a hero using i didn't have any R, any other rpgs at the time i yeah I, I had to make my own you've created your own uh tabletop role play game yes you see i am very poor so and i i couldn't afford i genuinely could not afford to buy the dungeons and dragons book or anything so i just uh, went online and made my own to play with my friends. I scribbled it down on my uh, my school notebook, the rules, everything, and it it was uh, it's genuinely pretty complex. And I'm proud of making it. That's We're kind of off topic. Perfectly on topic, my friend. That yes. it is an expression of yourself. It is a reflection of life. It is uh, it uh, to me. I feel like this conversation is the core element of what this whole program is meant to be to all of the character stuff into this and then say we're going to have a continued conversation in the future we're going to invite you back to the draft the creativity that brought you here and Mm -hmm. the the depth of uh of sort of understanding what tabletop role play games are about um Mm -hmm. we want to hear about the game you made um and we'll 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 touch on that in the future. And I guarantee, I promise that is a promise for me that we will do that because I think that's a fascinating discussion, and I'm looking forward to it. Okay, so cool. now we've got thirty thousand um, uh, advantages to go through. So about four more hours to show. You think? Look, uh, look, advantages. Like, let's just give a summary of them. Anything that has attack on it, it's because it's it's useful because you. Yeah, if you have a combat-oriented character, you, you, you're you going to have a situation where you want to trade your defense or your attack bonus or something. So, and those kind of di- represent different stances. And since Faraday is a fencer, there are going to be different stances where she has to either be more aggressive or be more defensive or be more accurate, you know? Yeah, yeah. All right, talk to me about these skills. Skills? Close combat with swords. Mm -hmm. That's a big one, you know? Yeah. Because she is a fencer. (laughs) Then (laughs) we have... Yeah. yeah, Then the other one is like deception and uh, persuasion. 
because other apart from being a fencer she is also an arms dealer she needs that and the third and thirdly there an f ton of expertises and yeah an extremely high almost rule breaking number of technology points yeah so here's my question so uh yeah <laughs> it is absurdly high yeah she's yeah. a so, genius because she is uh she is an inventor right now does this list expertise geography archaeology business machine i mean all of it makes perfect sense to me do you shift those and change those out with experience yes i kind of yes i do i do shift them out with experience yeah. especially the expertises because you know uh, as the character has more adventures she learns more about the world it's not like you're marching in and then suddenly you just you've just persuaded everybody and you've taken them all down because you've taunted them all and <laughs> that's only happened in solo games i am not super familiar with the mechanics of solo games it seems very very interesting and does that happen uh in the freedom verse like is that something that happens on the discord server yeah you, you can get in like lounges you know okay and so then and these are encounters that someone else has prepared yeah, like, uh, it, like you know, the friend says, okay, I want to put your character in this very specific situation. Ah. We're going to have, like, an action movie, okay? And you're the protagonist. And I'm like, That's and, then we, and, and then we do, like, something uh, very, very cool and also very, very gory and horrible together. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> right, so you kick a lot of butt. Very, I, I'm For some reason in my mind, I went to, like, the some of the scenes in The Matrix. Yeah. Just a lot of a lot of cartwheels through bullet uh, bullet storms and uh, sword storms in this case. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I'm buying. Because uh, I'm re I'm remembering a very specific and recent game. I just remember the one scene, man. The, the guy, the the other guy, the the DM. Uh, I'm not gonna name him. If he's yeah. watching, he knows who he is. But if he is, that's awesome. Uh, he described a uh, character that, by oh the way. Oh my gosh, wow. Okay, and these no. are bad guys, right? These are... Yeah, they're bad guys. He was, yeah. was going to kill me. He was going to kill a lot of people. Uh, okay, all right. Other than me. Uh, and that, but had, that's uh, an agreement I, I that you... Sword sword. What? Yeah. I was just going to say, and that's an agreement that you had with the the DM. Like, that was... that. We're, we're, uh, we're now about a couple minutes after an hour, uh, give or take a few. Um... Talk to me about these complications. I love it. Okay, so uh, various complications, uh, various complications, because she has a, a kind of like she has a screwed up lord. But the most important complication is the one that you're reading here now: morally dubious arms dealer. Um. So basically, uh, if you want to just, uh, if you just want to like sum up the lore it's just this it's just this one complication here the entire lore is just like oh look she was raised at a young age in a very rich family her father was uh is the owner of an arms dealing company in england you know mm. um her mother died when he, she was young and she was was not raised by her father her father neglected her she was raised by a robot. Um, Interesting. She uh, was a prodigy, and she got out of college before turning 18. And by then, she was already working for her father's company, which she would then inherit. She, would, she was going to eventually inherit. So she thinks, I want to be independent. I want to do something on my own. I am a proud, independent Black woman. <laughs> <laughs> so i'm gonna go to america and sell weapons because that's that, that's the dream isn't it and that's yeah, the that is the dream. dream so this, uh, this is what I, dream. It, it is indeed and my so my my uh question for you uh, is it clear about um do you get into why her her and her father are estranged um her father's kind of a bad guy <laughs> Yeah. Her father okay. is kind of like this this He's bad. Okay, so bad. so um so her mother died. Her the only person that her father liked her, her father actually loved was her mother. And when she died, he became emotionally distant. And that's uh, kind of like the, the in lore like gotcha. in my head. This is this is what happened, you know. 
that's yeah, uh, yeah. And, and, and then she she was kind of like abandoned you know she raised, she by, a was robot. raised by a robot at least it was a cool robot you know cool robot okay is that robot still cool. around oof spoilers <laughs> all right all right we don't have to, we don't have to yeah. go there but how yeah, about the this? name of the robot is mark henry by the way is, is so a, i it was a cool name that is a very very cool name but uh, you know having spent uh um a couple hours with you now i want to be like okay who's mark henry i'm looking up mark henry what is this all about um because there's probably like 40 layers of uh no no uh, no, 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 no. Mm -hmm, i don't believe it <laughs> but here's what i here's what i like whether her superheroics are in fact noble in cause or an elaborate ploy at networking is up to debate. Yeah. That's very shady. I love it. I mean, like it just—she's incredibly goes. shady. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's it the literally... best part of the character. I, I it's like the yeah. the entire humor of the characters. How shady she is. Yeah, Jesus. I love it. Yeah, I really. I mean, I really, really do. And. uh, Okay, interesting. Oh, okay. Some redacted information here. Yeah. Nice. Okay. And then, um, so uh, complication paranoia. Uh, we did talk about that. What's interesting because I asked you at the beginning, I said, give me three adjectives to describe this character. Mm -hmm. And paranoia was one of them. Yeah. And paranoia. Uh, oh, yeah. <laughs> no, no, go for it. Okay, so like, uh, like, just scroll a little bit up towards. Just, I, I want to just mention the the one cool thing. Uh, yeah, I remember. of course. Because, uh, because uh, the thing about the the inspiration of uh, being an arms dealer is actually uh, because initially I wanted to say, initially I just wanted to be like a scientist or something, you know? Yeah. The science team or something like that. <laughs> right. Uh. Oh, cool! I have these, um, I have these swords, and I have these, uh, these gadgets. And what I want to do is, I want to uh, visit other dimensions and talk to aliens and stuff like that. But then I was like, uh, "Hey, you know what would be cool? What if like like Lex Luthor pretended to be a superhero so he could sell his weapons? You know? Uh... Yeah. If I if I wrote DC comics, I would totally do that. Wait a second, I can do that right now. I think it, yeah. and I did it. <laughs> you did it. I think you quite literally did it. Yeah. Interesting. Okay. But still, there's some redeeming qualities. Yeah, because the thing is, like, I feel like eventually, um, like, given enough role play, she could be convinced because she is like pretending to be a superhero. It's, it could eventually be the kind of fake it till you make it kind of deal, you know? All right. I mean, we're all faking it in some way, but yeah, I get it. She has this influence of other superheroes around her, like saying, right. Let's do like, good like things. this we're Captain Freedom. Good things. Captain eventually Freedom. she's going to break out of that shell that she, has been created for her by parental negligence, you know? Sure. Yeah. yeah. I mean, possibly. Either that, or she could even, she could descend even uh, even deeper into it. You know the the uh, the pathos. Yeah, this is all very. Uh, I love it. I mean, it, it is. Uh, it, it it gets to the core of sort of the motivations and how you move forward. And you're right. Like you know, the exposure to heroes and all that kind of stuff. You can see a human being developing one way or the other and you know you know facing an, an enemy and having a choice and like yeah there's a lot of uh, a lot of stuff here um mm -hmm. i i like that you incorporated paranoia into this um you know i i think that uh yeah that, just this line faraday has been shot spied on persecuted manipulated threatened imprisoned betrayed starved stabbed trafficked and the target of many assassination attempts even needing to fake her own death so yeah then come yeah. the nightmares. Yeah. I mean, that's deep. That's really deep. Um, absolutely. It is. And then this is interesting. Your father. Okay. So the, this is a, a, a complication because just of his outsized role in the world and her life. Yeah. I liked, uh, oh, the, the, uh, I like the final line in this. Cause I kind of see, I kind of, kind of uh, just sums it up, you know, if you put a gun to his head, he'll steer it towards her, maybe even pull the trigger. He's, 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 
he's the 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 the, the psychology behind her being a, an arms dealer, being amoral and stuff, because he has no uh, no boundaries of morality. Yeah, yeah. Boundaries of morality. Yeah, he doesn't really care. He's Number free, go yeah. up. You know, that's yeah. that's that's his moral his philosophy. That's fascinating because then, then she's probably got to decide in her life if she is truly embracing morality or if she can just be like, meh, I'm bored with yeah. this. And the worst part is that, like, look, she's still, at least uh, the last interaction they've had together, she still loves and respects him, you know? Cause this, of course, yeah. Because that's yeah. how, you know? That's how kids are. That's how, that's yeah. How kids are. Ab- that's how yeah. adults are, you know? That is, it really it's is. Kind of, it is a really, complication. It's really hard to say, like, like say that kind of thing to your father, you know? So, so yeah. like, I don't love you anymore or something like that. It's really hard. Yeah, Jeez, oh, absolutely, I, yeah. I can't even fathom what it must be like to someone in, 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 in that situation, you know? Yeah, you know, Agua, um, having the opportunity to kind of sit and talk to you about this character uh, has been, you know, there, there's clearly more that we want to unpack here. Um, yeah. But, you know, I, I had I known <laughs> primarily that, yeah, was, uh, was, I, I already, I already went through kind of yeah, most of this. I, so, so she does have, so she does have a, a an in, in thing that, I like that. Oh, these besties are basically are it, this part about besties is basically just all the all the. It's an homage to all the all the the, the characters who have been her friend, the other gotcha. player characters and stuff. That's nice. I, think, I like I that. Okay, so this is sort of a, a a nod to these are other characters that that you these are other characters that people in the freedom verse are playing. Yeah, yeah, and these are like mostly that. NPCs. Gotcha, gotcha. I like that. And so, do you keep this as a as a reference for both yourself and and you know, say the, the you know the the uh, the GM, the GM, and the you know and players or? Yeah, kind of. Yeah, because I, like I keep both as a reference. Yeah, yeah, both as a reference to myself and the, the GM. But also because since like it's more complex than just an arms deal, I have to think about like everything, like distribution. Uh, security. Oh, sure. Uh, yeah. Manufacturing, and that I have like a contact for each of them. You know. Nice. Okay, I like that. I like that. So and, you, and, you I, really and are... I need the thing is I don't start with any of these. I have to get those relationships in game through role play, and that would be like very interesting. So how yeah. long have uh, you been working on Faraday? <sighs> Um, okay, let me think here, because there has been a hiatus, uh, which is the reason she faked her death, because I was banned from the server for like a couple months. That was, <laughs> that was a fun, that was a fun time. Well, yeah, I'm imagining by fun, you mean not so much fun, but we don't have to Yeah, more like mo- mental illness. But you're back now, right? <laughs> but I'm back. Yeah. Right it on. wasn't the cause of the mental illness. It's unrelated, but you get the point. Yeah, yeah. I, uh, I gotta tell you, Agua, I am, you know, uh, in seeing some of the emails, you know, we kind of bounced back and forth as we were planning for this. Um, I was prepared for some depth and some, some thoughtfulness. Um, but this has just been a, I mean, I love this stuff. I love learning about you as the player. I love your, commitment to building such depth in this uh in this experience because i think it's more than a game i think it is a i think it's an expression of of who you are as a person of your values of your what you want to learn how you want to grow uh how you want to engage the world uh I, I, it's very impressive um it, you should be very proud of this that, that means that means so much man that means a lot I, you know, and I, I say all of this, uh, absolutely impressed with the, the depth and all of that, but it is, uh, you know, the, how you know it's working is when you can share something that you've created in this way, this very complex piece of art, really, um, that isn't meant to just sort of be you in the space alone, like you are 
you're building an, an apparatus for engagement and uh, and doing it in a very exciting, fun way, rewarding for everybody that's engaging. Uh, and I bet people, I'm betting there's quite a few people who have, uh, who are a big fan of the depth that you're bringing to your Mutants and Masterminds game. There's a lot of people who are very interested in Faraday. I'm very glad that they are because it's very motivating as, you know, someone who does who who likes art in general like drawing yeah. and writing and uh as a means of like, communicating and connecting with others absolutely yeah communicating and connecting with others it's a very uh, like the thesis that i would like to give with this yeah character is that it, it is what you can do in a server like this because i'm yeah. like in an mmo you can't really uh, in an MMO, there aren't any stories. People, they, they, they put that in the advertising, make your own stories in Albion Online. Yeah, make right. your own stock exchange stories, but yeah. <laughs> right. You can't really... Uh, but you, you can't really make a... a like... This I can't be a pirate in Albion on, Online. I can't dress like a pirate or be... Or talk to other people like I, if I were a pirate. You can't really do that much very much <laughs> right. in, uh, in, in, in the traditional rpg where you have like you got your friends together and you're making a party you do have stories you know yeah uh, and yeah things to reflect on and it gives what i love about mutants mass friends in general is it gives people everyone gets a chance to tell some story right it's not just the dm telling kind of the world what to do the gm to tell telling you know what you're doing and and you experience this thing but like you're building real stories. Uh, you're doing an awesome thing here. You know, there's there's just not a word that adequately captures what you've made. And uh, I will say this, the word gratitude adequately captures my um, uh, my feelings for you hanging out and just sharing this with us. Um, it, it is, so you should be proud of that. Thank you for spending time and hanging out. Um, we will be uh, in touch again because we want to talk about other things too. And I hope you're you're uh, tuning in to uh, Mutants and Masterminds Monday, which is, you know, every Monday, 2 p.m. Pacific. Would you come back and can we talk a little bit more about uh, about tabletop roleplay games and and uh, and maybe some of your own work? Yeah, absolutely. Okay, All that right. was awesome. Did you have fun? And you said you said gratitude, and then let me tell you, equally so, if not more so, because this this was an like this was an amazing experience. Jesus Christ, I I have never been to the live stream before. I've never like had to have like an in-depth conversation about some art i've created before you know it, it's, well, then it's, it's long it's, past it's, time it's, yeah it's mind-boggling you know I, i've never i've uh, i i am eternally grateful for you jesus if you are somebody who has made a character or you have um you want to share some of the some of the crunchy bits um and and why you built your character the way that you have send a note to let's play at green and uh and we will be in touch we will schedule a time and you can hang out with us too talking about your character here on the drafting table uh an exploration of character creation through mutants and masterminds third edition because it's a lot of fun agua thank you so much man yeah <laughs>